Hi, I'm Dawson Fuss, and you're watching Music Enthusiast. I'm Sarah from Music Enthusiast, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Dawson Fuss. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am so great. It's like nighttime here, but I am so glad to be talking to you. You just released your debut single. How are you feeling? I did. I am so excited um, to have finally have it out there. I've been working on it for months, and I'm just so thrilled people can hear it now. It's a bop, if I say so myself. Thank it's you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, so I know that you've always like been a fan of music, literally mm -hmm. since you were a kid. So do you have a fondest musical memory? Yeah, well, I grew up doing musical theater because it was really the only option for, for music in town for young people. And I, I loved doing that. I thought I was going to go to musical theater college until like a, a couple years ago. And my fondest memories were always the summers when I got to go to music camp and in, in, in theater camp because I, I, I live in kind of a small town and there aren't a whole lot of people that have the same passions as I do. So it was really cool to be with people that were like-minded and people that I could bond with over something that I'm really passionate about. So that was always definitely my fondest memories, but also uh, my fondest memories are also, um, you know, night drives. I love a good night drive. Me and too. Blast some music and roll the windows down and have a main character moment. And uh, those are always like the best times of either alone or with my friends. And I just love it. Me too. And I was also a musical theater kid. Do you yeah. have, a do you have a favorite musical? We were actually in New York right before Broadway closed, like the day of, and we saw uh, Jagged Little Pill by, with the music by Lance Morissette, which was amazing. So that's probably one of my favorites. That's so great. Yeah. And late night drives are a must for me. So what a must. is your go-to late night drive song? Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. My favorite night drive song, oh, okay. Either She by Harry Styles. Mm -hmm. Actually, yes, She by Harry Styles, <laughs> the Night Drive song. If you're going to Night Drive, put that on your playlist. You won't regret it. I love the choice. <laughs> yes. And you were on Teen Star Santa, Bra Santa Barbara. So how do you feel that sort of like shaped you into the artist you are today? Yeah. So if any of you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a, a American Idol and like a local American Idol that happens in one night. They have 10 finalists that are, are, are slimmed down um, from an a, a initial audition process. And then there's the first round and then the audience votes on their phone. And then there's a second round of three people and then the winner's chosen. So I did it for two years and I got in the top three both times. And last year it was, one of the judges was actually Randy Jackson from American Idol, which was, like mind blowing that um, he was like listening <laughs> to my music. And I made it to the second round last year also. And I got to perform like one of the first songs I'd ever written called Real Boys Don't Cry, which will be on the EP in uh, the fall. Yeah. And um, he, he said some amazing stuff about, about the song. I think he said like A Star Is Born and that I have swag, which I'll take any day of the week. Um, yeah. It was so reassuring to hear someone of his like position saying that I, I don't know, that I have something. And uh, I don't, it was just so out of this world for, for him to say that. And, and also the other judges. And it was, it was an awesome experience. It definitely reassured my love of performing. I definitely kind of enter some, other world when I'm when I'm on stage and, and in front of an audience and it's just amazing yeah definitely and now because like with like corona and all of this mm. like, you can't perform so how yeah. have you been like sort of like coping with all this yeah COVID unlike uh, like a lot of my friends I feel like it's been beneficial for me as an artist because it's given me a lot of time to to think within myself about like what do I want to do? Like, who am I as a person, as an artist? What like really matters to me? And I think on more of a, a music side of that, 
it's um, given me a lot more opportunities than I think I would have had on a regular year. I use this website called Sound Better, which is made by Spotify, which kind of is a freelance service that brings together artists and musicians. And, uh, you know, a lot of musicians were without work um, during the beginning stages of COVID. So they went to Sound Better. So I, um, on the same song that I sang at Teen Star, when I produced it, I had this, I wanted a string section. So I had this string arranger that works for Hans Zimmer. Uh, record a, a whole string section, which sounds so it, like it makes me cry every time I hear it. So um, yeah, and I, you know, found the producers I work with and the writers I work with still from there. And it, yeah, COVID has just been really beneficial for where I am now. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Not grateful for COVID, but grateful for what <laughs> COVID <laughs> helped me with. I'm glad to hear it and like on to hey you which is mm -hmm. your debut track congrats again it's thank you off, like i said before <laughs> um so how did the song come together so that was actually the first song i'd written with one of the writers i still work with he's he lives in denmark mm -hmm. um my first international collaboration and it's about you know all the feelings that come after a breakup and kind of taking empowerment and realizing that even though there's a ton of confusion and doubt and anger, like what you're feeling is okay. It came about after my f like first real love during COVID that, that ended because of the, the isolation COVID caused like mentally and physically. I wrote it like four or five months ago and um, it's definitely one of my favorite songs on the on the EP. And I'm, again, so happy <laughs> that it's, it's finally out there. So because it took like such a short amount of time to make, did you always think that this would be like your debut track? You know, when I wrote that first song, like a year and a few months ago, I had no clue that I was going to be making an EP <laughs> or at least making this many songs. So... I definitely wanted to have all the songs finished or at least finished writing before I pick the first single. So I have, it's going to be a seven song uh, collection and I have, I have everything written. We're still in, in production on some of them, but it, it definitely stood out to me as the pivotal point in, in the EP where there's kind of that self assurance and that self realization that everything's going to be okay because the the EP follows kind of a journey it's called edge of adolescence and it follows the journey of like I said that confusion of being a teenager like on the cusp of being an adult but still being limited by the teenage years and being a, a kid really it's kind of the midpoint of having a ton of freedom of like being 17 but still not having like not having full responsibility but still being restricted and and kind of that liberating experience but still having kind of a crutch to lean on when when things aren't perfect and i think it's a great kickstart to the to the whole thing yeah it definitely is and again like it's super vulnerable, but super catchy. Mm. It's sort of like you putting sad lyrics with like an upbeat yeah. track. So mm. what was it like creating something like that? Did you always think it would be like such an upbeat track? My writing process, we usually start with like a really stripped production and then we'll, we'll write to it. So loved like every step of the way as it got more finished, I kept loving it more. Yeah. And there are definitely some tracks I work on where like, I'm not the biggest fan of the scratch production. And then as we get more, more down the road, it's like not my favorite, which kind of starts at the beginning. But the fact that I loved just the initial, like, you know, keys, bass and drums, like a really, really stripped production, I think said a lot for, for where it went. And I knew, like, I, I, I think I write better slow, sad songs than upbeat songs or at least that's where my brain goes when I start writing. So this is kind of the, the home stretch of the EP where I'm like, okay, I need some upbeat songs. And 
we came up with this with this production and, and concept and I, I fell in love with it right away. I can't wait for the EP. It's going to be so great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is sort of a fun question, but if you could live in a music video, which music video would you live in? Oh, hmm. Okay, like I would say WAP because that like aesthetic is so like appealing, but just for the sake of my mom watching this, <laughs> I'll say, um, <laughs> I'll say Adore You. Ooh. by Harry Styles, that whole like universe that of that like island and that utopian big fish world um as you can tell I love Harry Styles um <laughs> who does it true if they don't <laughs> then I don't really want to talk to them but um <laughs> you know I, I love that that vibe of kind of magical realism those are great choices <laughs> and I was talking your TikTok page and you have a great sense of style. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, do you get inspiration from anywhere or do you just like sort of like get what's it, what attracts to you? Yeah, I mean definitely both. I I love thrifting. This yeah. whole fit today is thrifted. I love um it. and I definitely get what looks appealing to me and what I think could go well with with other stuff out of my closet. I love Pinterest. I've just been getting into it recently. Yeah. And I'll like scroll through Pinterest, like what I want to wear today. But I definitely have some like style icons. Harry Styles again. Yeah. <laughs> Becoming a Harry Styles Stan interview. But um he I love that like vintage, like modern vintage look, mixing like modern fashion concepts Ooh. with like flare pants and, and retro items. I love it. And Thank last you. question, no problem. Mm -hmm. Last question, do you have any favorite artists at the moment that you wanna share? Cause we're always looking for more. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Rule. He's definitely like my favorite artist who I get the most inspiration from. And I found this, this smaller artist on uh, Spotify named Noah Guy. He He's like, he's, he's a pretty small artist, but his music is, is super vibey. Don't quote me on this, but I think he might produce his stuff too. He definitely writes it, but I think he produces it, but his stuff is like, is super incredible and, and really underrated. Amazing. Well, thank you. It was so great to talk to you. Thank you for having me.